Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. In this incredible episode of Red Giant TV, my good friends at Tiny Inventions, Max Porter, and Ru Kuahata are going to push the limits of After Effects and blow your mind. Now, you might think that hyperbole, if you know what that word means, but I'm not kidding you here. You're about to see what true creativity and talent can yield. Now, every morning of every single day, as I lift her out of her crib, my daughter Noah says, I want to watch Electric Car, a video from They Might Be Giants that was directed and animated by Tiny Inventions. In fact, it's this video that started off my relationship with them. After my wife showed me the visual awesomeness that you're seeing here, I contacted Tiny Inventions just to say how much I like their work, and we've been good friends ever since. And they don't just work on projects for my favorite rock band of all time. Now, they also do plenty of commercial work on projects for companies like Trump, Polo, Jack Pacific, and Origel. Hey, someone's got to make brushing your teeth fun again, you know? What makes Tiny Inventions special is their unique approach of mixing real-world models that they build out of found materials with computer animation, stop-motion, puppetry, hand-drawn imagery, and photography. And in their recent film, Something Left, Something Taken, they've brought this unique approach to a new level of artistic excellence. Today, in this episode of Red Giant TV, they'll share their workflow from start to finish to show you how they build, photograph, animate, composite, and color correct for their projects. Buckle up, boys and girls, because we're going for a ride in a small, structurally unsound, environmentally friendly car. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Max. Hi, I'm Ru. And uh, we are Tiny Inventions, um, and we're going to show you a little bit about the workflow for our new film, Something Left, Something Taken, and how we use Red Giant products. For materials, we decided to use everything from cardboard, which we got weekly from Fresh Direct, um, some old clothing for characters' clothes. As you can see, this is the driver's clothes. And we also purchased some fabric for skin and Max's clothes. Uh, we used a lot of junk, uh, a lot of recycling materials that we use daily, like a yogurt container. Uh, the core of the toilet paper, which was used for the vent system at the airport. Uh, we used a lot of these little plastic things from t the cap of the make makeup bottle or cap of acrylics. Um, these turned into the jars of the formaldehyde forensic labs. All the characters are made in 2.5D, meaning from the front it's, it looks three-dimensional and it has a little bit of volume but from behind, it's completely flat. First, I draw the body on the milk carton and cut it out. Then, I put several sheets of cotton to fluff it up. Then I wrap the fabric around and tighten it with glue gun. Then last, I sew some clothing and put it on. Uh, some of the features are made out of different materials. For example, um, Eyeballs made out of a ping pong ball, and the lid is a skin colored string braided in rows. Mouth shapes are uh, pink ropes, and teeth are little racers. For hands, we decided to use my hand. It's my winter glove inside with a skin colored glove and my arm is also padded with cotton because my arm was too thin and I'm wearing the same clothes as the Max character and what we did was I posed and then we photographed that's how we got about 100 hand positions the characters that Rue crafted are uh, photographed on a piece of plexiglass and we photograph on plexiglass so we can underlight the uh, crafted materials um, this kind of provides a nice natural light wrap to the uh, the, the photographs. Um, it's also important that we used a big, broad light source, such as this softbox. Uh, we didn't want the lighting to be too direct because the character is going to be integrated into a bunch of different environments, and we can do a bunch of relighting in After Effects. Character parts like uh, the shoe are photographed on a Lazy Susan, and we photograph them 360 degrees. 
in uh, tiny increments. And uh, this just gives us maximum flexibility when animating. The photographs were captured as Nikon RAW files. They were next brought into Adobe Photoshop and masked and retouched using Wacom Cintiqs and Wacom tablets. All the elements that were prepared in Photoshop are imported into After Effects. We have a lot of layers prepared because um, After Effects puppet animation is pretty limited and we wanted to push the boundary. So all these layers are parented to a body layer. So when I move the body around, all the body parts will follow. Let's zoom into the hand. Uh, we have about 100 photographs for the hands. And they're time remapped. And as you can see, they're photographed from various angles. So this gave us a lot of flexibility with animation. Same thing with the shoes. It has about 50 photographs and they're time remapped, just like the hands. So it looks like the shoes are rotating and this gave more depth in animation. We spent a little more time uh, prepping the arms. There are two sets of arms. Uh, first one, this is in front of the body layer and there's another set behind. So when I have this icon on, which is back, and when I move the hand, both the hand and arm layer are behind the body. And with this is in front F. Both hand and the arm are in front of the body. And what we use the most is the combination of front and back. And here I actually have to go into the arm layer and change the uh, mask layer a little bit. So now, when I move the hand, the hand's in front of the body, but the arm layer is still behind the body. So this gave us a lot of flexibility and we were able to create subtle three-quarter position only with one body. So let's go into the head comp. So within this pre-comp we have all the facial features like eyebrows, nose, mouth, eyes. And all these features have expression which is tied back to the main comp. So this allowed us to uh, animate everything using these icons. And we didn't have to go into pre-comp at all, which saved a lot of time. So for example, if I wanna move the mouth or use the time remap to change the mouth position, I just have to use this um, icon to animate everything. And all these uh, facial features are connected to a null right here. And all I'm doing is going right and left. But the skin layer is also moving along, so it looks like the head's rotating. The crafted cardboard car was photographed from various angles, and they were put together digitally in 3D space. Especially if you look at this from a top view, you can see that we use Z-Space. All these layers are connected to control car body, which is a null layer. And this does not include any tires, so if I go up and down, only the top of the body moves, not the tires. So for bumpy rows, uh, position up and down, and when the car turned, 
we use the rotation to create like a subtle movement in the car. So this null is connected to another null called control full. And this includes tires, so this is how we move the car in 3D space. For headlights, uh, we use Trapco Lux and Red Giant Null Light Factory. So these are really convenient for dark forest scenes. Inside of the car is again photographed in layers. especially if you look at this from top view, you can see that all the layers are separated in 3D space. It's really subtle, but when there's a camera shake or camera move like pan, you can really feel the depth. Uh, we photograph from eight different angles for inside of the car, like three quarter uh, side view, front view, and set it up the same way in Z space. To create the rain effects for the car scenes, uh, we filmed ourselves dripping and spraying water on a large piece of glass. Uh, this was shot against a black photo backdrop with a matte finish. The rain footage was rendered as a TIFF sequence and imported into After Effects. So I'm going to show you how we got rid of uh, the black background in After Effects. So uh, I have a comp here that's 12, uh, 1280 by 720. And I'm going to make a new solid, call it BG ramp. I'm going to come up to effects controls, right click, generate ramp, and I'm just going to make a, a blue ramp with two different hues. I'm going to uh, temporarily lock the BG ramp layer and drop the rain footage into the comp. Right click on the rain footage, transform, fit to comp. So uh, my first instinct would be to set the rain footage in screen mode. And it does appear to uh, get rid of the, uh, the black of the footage. But the problem is blending modes don't actually generate an alpha channel. They create transparency based on what's below them. So if I hide the BG ramp layer, you can see uh, the black wasn't actually uh, turned into an alpha channel. And this is important because if we render the footage without a ba uh, background, there will be no transparency. So let me just set this back to normal mode. And um, I'm going to actually get rid of this black with a great free little plugin called Unmolt. And those of you who have used No Light Factory might recognize the word Unmolt from uh, one of the functions in the lens flares. So I'm going to select my effects control panel, null, unmolt. And what this does is uh, unmolt actually generates an alpha channel based on luminance. So it will convert all of the black matte into transparency. If I hide my BG ramp layer, you can see that the, uh, the alpha channel is intact. And you'll probably be able to see this better if I Generate, fill, perfect. As a final step in the compositing phase, we used KeyCorrect Pro's uh, features to integrate the character and the background and just sort of make them gel together. First, let's take a look at this photograph of a Brahmi toy from Yo Gabba Gabba. If you can notice, the character and the background sort of blend together at the edge. And that's one of the reasons why it looks like a single photograph, which it is. Let's compare that to a composite that I created of the same composition. So we have the character layer, a shadow layer, and the background layer. 
And one of the dead giveaways that this is a composite is the hard edge to the character layer. It's important to note that you do want to get keep the mat as sharp as possible um, in the beginning because it's easier to blur something than to sharpen it. And we could easily blur the edge using key correct edge blur. And uh, right out of the box, blur amount is four, the edge width is four. Let's zoom in. Looks pretty good. And let's compare that to the original photo. The original photo, the composite. Original photo, composite. Let's go back to our uh, composition. The Max character is suffering from that same hard edge. So I'm going to select the Max character, reapply Edge Blur, and actually change the blur amount to about 3 and the edge width to 3. That's generally uh, the parameters that we used for a framing of this nature. But if we apply that, those same parameters to a wide shot, such as this one, all of this fine detail would get blurred out. So we did have to modify uh, the parameters based on the framing of the composition. And the same goes for a close-up like this one. Um, in close-ups, like extreme close-ups, we really wanted to push that shallow depth of field look. So the edge really blurred. So I think this, uh, this edge width was about 8. As a final step in the composite, I use a Key Correct Pro's Light Wrap tool to uh, take some pixels from the background layer and wrap them onto the foreground layer. To do that, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select all of my background layers, pre-compose, move all attributes into a new composition. I'm going to name this uh, Scene 17, Shot 23, BG Pre-Comp. Then I'll select the max character's uh, layer, pull up key correct, light wrap, and start changing the uh, parameters. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it at comp on background, change the background layer to scene 1723BG pre-comp, which are all the layers that we just pre-composed. The background blur I'm going to change to uh, 65. Comp mode, this is uh, kind of based on uh, kind of what you're going for. Screen mode I found to be really helpful in uh, daytime scenes where the uh, light is very strong from behind. Add tends to be uh, nice for uh, rim light I found. None seems like it would work really nicely for a, a night scene like this where the background light is not very strong. But uh, actually, we, we tended to use screen mode uh, even for night scenes because we were going for a, a more exaggerated sense of light. And uh, this helped kind of pop the character from the background. Width, we generally used about 35. And then uh, blend with original, we also used 35. And this, this blend with original function is really, really nice. And it's a feature that, uh, that is included in all the tools in KeyCorrect Pro. And this allows you to really dial in uh, some subtle effects. When we started Something Left, Something Taken, we uh, intended to do all the final color correcting in Apple Color. However, we decided that it would save a lot of time and uh, would be more of an integrated pipeline if we could grade directly in After Effects. The challenge was to figure out a way to set After Effects up similar to Apple Color. So anyone who's used Apple Color is familiar with uh, the room setup. There are eight different rooms and each, uh, each one is designed for a specific task, and um, each room kind of builds on top of the one before, 
So in this way, you can kind of daisy chain corrections rather than trying to solve everything in a single pass. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, we did all the color work uh, with the understanding that 99% of the people watching the movie would be watching off of their computer. So we set the project under project settings, the working space to sRGB, and we worked at 16 bits per channel. Uh, if we were going to broadcast, obviously there would be stricter guidelines, but uh, for this particular movie, we just uh, monitored off of a regular computer screen. Number two, since there was no really hard deadline for the film, we could deal with long render times. And often we set up our color, uh, color corrections so that they were easier for the user rather than more efficient render-wise. So I'm going to start by adding a new adjustment layer and I'm going to call it primary in. And in the effects control panel, I'll right click, select magic bullet colorista. I'm going to take the shadows and pull them up just a little bit because they're kind of crushed too much. And I'm going to pull up the highlights just a touch as well because they're a little uh, low and pull up the midtones a little bit just to spread the range. Next thing I'm going to do is add another adjustment layer and I'm going to call this CC color correction. I'm going to add an instance of magic bullet looks. Hit edit to fire up the looks builder. And I'm going to load a custom uh, preset that I created. So file, open look file, inside car night. And you'll notice right away that this is a, a pretty typical day for night type of look. Um, it's a little dark and it's a little extreme, but I like working um, this is one of the reasons I like working on adjustment layers because I can create a really dark or extreme look and then with the opacity I can kind of dial it down so I'll dial that down to 65. The next thing I wanted to do is add a little spot correction to the faces just to pop them out a little bit and here's a, a nice little technique that we used in the movie uh, to get sort of a stylized vignette that automatically tracks with the character's movement. So I'm going to select the character layer and duplicate. I can get rid of all of the effects on that layer because I don't need them. And hit uh, Command Shift C to pre-compose. So I'm going to call this Max Vignette. Double click to enter the, uh, to enter the pre-comp. And I'm going to draw two masks, one which will delete the body, leaving just the face. And one that's just a, a, a big rectangle set to subtract at the top of the frame. Next thing I'm going to do is add two or three, rather, um, instances of Simple Choker. So I choke the mat all the way to 100, duplicate, and duplicate again. And that's a little too much, so the third one I'll, I'll set to about 50. And I'm going to right-click in, uh, in the layers and add a new solid, black, make comp size. I'm going to call this just black. BG. And I'm going to drag that underneath the character layer. Under mode, I'm going to set the character mode to silhouette alpha. And right away you'll notice that I just punched a hole in that black solid. I'm going to add another adjustment layer. Call this fast blur. Blur fast blur. Make sure to uh, toggle the repeat edge pixels on. and I'm going to set the blurriness to 200. So if I do a RAM preview, you'll kind of see what's happening here. 
I've created a tracking vignette that will automatically move with the character's positions because it's created out of the character layers. So if we come back into the main comp, you can see what's happening here. I'm going to make a new adjustment layer and drag it underneath the uh, max vignette pre-comp. And I'm going to call this adjustment layer max spot correction or something along those lines. Set the track mat to alpha inverted. And I'm going to add yet another instance of Magic Bullet Colorista. And this time I'm going to just pull the highlights up to brighten up the face a little bit. And perhaps I'll just boost the saturation a little bit too. So I'll add about 18. So you can see I've really kind of popped that face out nicely and it tracks automatically. So I just went ahead and um, did the same type of spot correction for the Rue character. Next I'm going to add another adjustment layer. I'm going to call this Telecine. And I'm going to add an instance of Magic Bullet Looks. And drop a Telecine net effect into the looks builder. Now this is a little little strong, a little extreme, but I'm going to dial this down with opacity. Um, and you'll notice what this does is sort of darkens and blooms the, the shadow areas and glows the highlights a bit. And uh, this looks nice and it, it also kind of makes the, the, uh, the scene feel moist, which works with the rain, rainy environment. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to dial down the opacity to about 50%. Um, now everything's looking pretty good. The one thing that I'm not really happy with is the, uh, the whites in the eyes t uh, look like they're clipping. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer, call this diffusion, open up looks again, and I'm going to drop some diffusion into the scene and this will just sort of create a soften, uh, softer transition in the clipped white areas. I'm going to add another adjustment layer, call this primary out. Add a final instance of Magic Bullet Colorista. And I'm just going to pull up the shadow, shadows a little bit because they're kind of too crushed right now. And I'm going to drop the highlights just a bit because they're kind of clipping. So that's the, uh, the last sort of adjustment of color correction. And finally, I'm going to add another adjustment layer, call this corner burn, and I'm just going to add a general vignette to the scene just so we're, our attention is focused on their faces rather than the corners, so it, just to kind of narrow our focus. Select the oval to tool, double click, set my mask at subtract, feather it about 150 pixels. Right click in the effects control panel and just drop a levels adjustment in. And I'm going to just lower the output white just a little bit to darken these edges. And I can modify the circle just a little bit so it's not a perfect circle. And that's that. That's uh, the color correction for one scene. Die. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. You're wrong. We are going to die. <gasps> this is what we're gonna do. 
we're going to leave forensic evidence. What do you mean? Well, investigators will look for trace evidence, so we need to leave some behind. But we also have to take some away. You're right, because our bodies will get dumped in the bushes. Exactly. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you, Max and Rue. Of course, after watching stuff like this, I either want to get really creative or go and hide under a blanket because it's clear that I'm a hack. If you enjoyed this episode of Red Giant TV and want to learn more about Tiny Inventions and their work, check out tinyinventions.com, where you can watch their film, Something Left, Something Taken, follow their blog, where they share insight into their creative process, and where they post tips and techniques as they come up with them. Also, I'd like to mention cinematographer Jason Guerrero, whose name I am probably not pronouncing correctly at all, but who did a great job in filming this episode of Red Giant TV. You can find his fantastic work at jasonguerrero.com. And uh, don't forget that you can download free trials of all of the Red Giant plugins used by Max and Rue at redgiantsoftware.com. Oh, and uh, speaking of free, uh, don't forget to check out redgiantpeople.com where you can get tons of free animation or color correction presets for Trap Code and Magic Bullet and more. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for redgianttv.com. See you next time.